What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we've got a spicy video for you. Today we're gonna be going over, I guess, my personal opinions about two of the most popular versions of pistol for concealed carry. The micro nine millimeter pistol versus the standard subcompact. So today we have a lot of guns on the table. We'll introduce all the players involved and then we'll go through some of the pros and cons of each genre and then we'll let you decide whether you think the subcompact is obsolete and then I'll give you my opinion as well. If you want it, I don't know, but you're gonna get it. Before we do that, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys we do videos like this. We have most of the guns on the table because of the Patreon supporters and I really appreciate it. If you wanna support the Honest Gun content, just go to the link in the description below. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help, so please go down there and donate to those kids. Now, first we're going to talk about our subcompacts. We're going to go over the M&P, Canic, SC, the subcompact, the Fat Baby, the Glock 26, the FN, CZ, P10, S. So our micros, the little mini Canic, 43X, Staccato CS, and we'll talk about whether or not that's actually a Micro 9 in a minute the Super Micro P365, the Shield Plus. So first up, I wanna talk about some of the pros of the Micro 9 that you're probably all aware of, and then I will rebuttal with the pros of the subcompacts. So first off, let's go with just the P365 for an example. Uh, it kind of started off the micro subcompact genre, the Micro 9 millimeter, and I feel like it is one of still today's best examples. It is a very, very small gun, three inch barrel, 10 round magazine capacity with the flush fit mag, so you can get 12 and 15. And basically what SIG did with this pistol is create sort of a stack in a half style magazine in order to get an almost double stack magazine into a single stack profile firearm. So before the P365, we essentially had things like the standard shield, which looks a lot like this because the shield and the shield plus are the exact same size. And before that, you could only get single stack magazines like the Glock 43X still is, and you were able to only get 10 rounds for a similar size grip as a uh, 15 round compact, but in a much slimmer uh, overall platform. And the reason why you want it to be slimmer is because most people carry inside the waistband. It's a very good concealable way to carry, whether that be appendix, three o'clock, six o'clock, however you do it, inside the waistband is still inside the waistband and thinner is always better in that case because you have this gun between you and your pants and you can see how uncomfortable or comfortable it might be depending on how thick or thin it is. And we all have thick or thin preferences, but personally for inside the waistband, thinner is generally better. And as you can see here on the single stack Glock 43X, it is extremely thin by comparison to its subcompact counterpart, which is going to be the Glock 26. So as you can see there, Glock 26, 10 rounds, uh, Glock 43X, 10 rounds. And this is kind of the standard single stack design, and this is the standard double stack design. Enter in the Micro 9, like the P365, and you will find that it is much slimmer for the same capacity as the Glock 26. Now keep that in mind that both of these have similar barrel lengths and similar capacities, and they shoot a similar size caliber, but one is significantly chunkier than the other. Now they are thinner overall profile, but they are traditionally lighter as well. The P365, I want to say comes in at around 17 ounces, which is very, very light for a nine millimeter pistol, and it's very, 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 very light for a nine millimeter pistol that takes a 10 or 12 round capacity. They usually have about three inch barrels or less, and they usually have an overall capacity of between 10 and 12 rounds. Now again, they can take larger magazines sometimes, but for the most part, they are limited to their stack and a half magazine design. So like the P365, for example here, it can only take the P365 magazines, not the P320. Now, price on these guns are about the same. However, the micro nine millimeters are a little bit more expensive than the subcompacts these days because they're more in vogue and they're more popular. Now, they are thinner and lighter and they carry a similar capacity as you can see here with the Canic MC9, their micro subcompact versus the Canic SC here, which is their subcompact. As you can see clearly, plain as day, that the uh, micro is definitely thinner than the subcompact and it's a few ounces lighter than it as well. Now what is the trade-off for that? Because it's not all good with the tiny little pistols. Well here's the trade-off. You get a thinner grip on this and you get a thicker grip on that. Now it's good for carry, but it's not so good for shooting. And I'll tell you why. First up, 
If you have a thicker grip, it does a couple of things for you. Number one, it allows you more surface area on the pistol to control recoil. You can understand that your hands are stopping the gun from flying out of your hands. So the more surface area you have on the firearm, the more friction you're gonna have, the better you're gonna have a grip. So as you can see here, when I bear down on this pistol, I can get more hand on the gun on the FC than I can on the MC9 here. There's just not as much gap to fit my support hand. Support hand does nothing but recoil control, keep that in mind. Dominant hand needs to use your trigger finger here to articulate the trigger to get an accurate shot. So you can't squeeze super hard with your right hand, but you can squeeze the living daylights out of it with your left if you so choose. The problem is you have no space to grab there, so you get shittier recoil control with a Micro 9 by comparison to a subcompact. As you can see here, there's more room. I can put my hand there. I can get contact with the inside of the meat of my hand there and really make a dent in that recoil control. On top of that, you also can use that left hand to stabilize the gun under accurate fire. So if I want to slap the trigger real fast or shoot real fast, and I don't wanna care so much about my trigger control, I can use that left hand to hold that gun in place a little bit better, and I can get more accurate shots with this. Plus, just generally a bigger grip is more comfortable, and I've never seen a person that doesn't shoot a bigger grip handgun better. So you get more speed and more accuracy, marginal, but you do get more with a subcompact. But what else do you get? Well, they've been around longer, so you usually get more holster options. That's, that's usually true. And also, you often get more modularity options. So a lot of times with pistols like this, you can put uh, larger slides or smaller slides or larger grips or smaller grips on the subcompacts because they are parts compatible, for the most part, with their larger brothers and sisters. So you take the Glock 26, for example, and not only is the Glock 26 gonna take the exact same magazines as the standard Glocks, but it's gonna take the same sights and trigger groups and things like that. And not all subcompacts will be parts compatible. Uh, some will and some won't, so keep that in mind. But on Glocks like this, you're gonna get you know magazine release, sights, some of the internal parts, trigger groups, things like that. And on other guns, you get more or less. But subcompacts are definitely gonna be more parts compatible and more modular, especially with the magazines. And that's kind of the key point to this video I wanted to hit on, is the fact that yes, the subcompacts are larger, but they do accept the larger magazines as well. So you can put a, a 17 round magazine in your Glock 26 if you so choose. You could put a 17 round magazine in your Canik TP9 if you so choose. Now some of these guns, especially like the Canik MC9, they have such thin magazines that they actually will accept the larger magazines, which is honestly pretty sweet. So good on Canik for that, but most of the very popular Micro 9s like the Shield Plus or the P365 or even the Glock 43, they are not capable of doing that, at least not at the moment. So I'm gonna take two of the M&Ps here and we're gonna compare them size to size. That way you can kind of see whether or not you wanted to carry the bigger one or the small one based on the size profile. As you can see here, the shield is considerably smaller than the M&P compact here. But as you can probably see in the footage, the M&P Contact does shoot a little bit better. It is a little bit faster and it is a little bit more accurate. How much is really up to you. Take the Canik versus Canik here. Again, and these are very, very similar. Canik does a good job of keeping the size and weight profile pretty similar. The subcompact still is bigger, however, and I promise you it still does shoot better. And to be honest, it's kind of a weird argument because there's not a lot of honest parameters between subcompact and micro subcompact other than one's usually thin and one's using a stack and a half magazine. And I'll give you kind of an example of that. So the Staccato X or CS here is a brand new pistol and it is marketed as a micro nine millimeter. However, it's very large. It's uh, bigger than a Glock 26, as you can see here, by a good bit. And I'm not super sure what's so micro about this pistol. Like if you can see the size of the grip between the Glock 26, this is subcompact, and this is supposed to be a micro compact. As you can see here, they are, they are definitely, this gun is definitely bigger, but they still uh, categorize this as a micro nine because of the stack and a half magazine. And even though this is a very large pistol, it still does not accept the extra large standard 2011 magazines, which I think is kind of fascinating. So it kind of goes back and forth on size to weight sometimes, but for the most part, you're looking at a double stack, full size uh, pistol magazine versus a stack and a half. So even though I see a lot of comments about how guns like the CZP-10S or maybe even the FN, which we've been doing recently, are obsolete and these are outdated and there's no reason to get them over something like a P365, uh, personally for me, 
the biggest thing is gonna be the big hands thing. I shoot subcompacts better because I am a large, larger person. And my wife is smaller, she has a tendency to shoot smaller grip guns better, and a lot of that is gonna be due to trigger reach, that's kind of the final thing I wanted to talk about, is that you really do have to just not watch gun videos all the time, you really do have to go to the gun store and actually try some guns out, and figure out what your trigger reach is, and figure out what the best grip for your hand is. Because your trigger reach on your gun might fit best on a P365. So you can see here that this is a very small gun, and if I, if I lock my right hand up, there's literally not even any space to put my left hand at all. So I have no recoil control of my left hand at all so my accuracy and recoil kind of go out the window but add uh, add salt on the wound here and you can see we'll do a little dry fire when I bring my trigger finger in there this is where my trigger finger has to set right as you can see there's a lot of gap between my trigger finger and the gun there and that's a lot of I'm trying to warm it so far down there's a lot of room for air and what happens when people generally shoot low and left is if you're pulling the if you're pulling the gun like this you generally pull it to the side because you don't have any opposing force on the left side. And on top of that, your trigger finger is just too far in and you're not warming enough and you're just really fulcruming that thing over to the left. So that is really easy to do for a P365 for me, even though it's comfortable to carry. And now you take a look at this much larger FN. Not only do I have tons of room for my support hand, which feels great, it fits my hand, but now as you can see here where my uh, trigger finger fits on the trigger, it's so much more comfortable for me to pull this one to the rear without moving it side to side, simply because the reach between the web of my hand and the end of my finger feel, feels much better with a larger grip gun. The larger the circumference of the grip, the more likely it is to fit longer fingers. Now, proper trigger placement on your gun isn't completely necessary. Obviously, I can figure out how to make all these guns work, and maybe being more comfortable on a day-to-day -day basis while carrying it is more important to you. So, these are not things that I'm trying to say are more important than the other. These are just factors that you need to consider. The circumference of the grip, the amount of grip you can control with your left hand, the point where you're gonna put your trigger finger on the trigger, all matter a great deal in the performance with the handgun not just size and weight. So I think a lot of times when people are looking for a carry gun, they're trying to get as small as absolutely possible, when maybe you should actually be just looking for the gun that you shoot and fits you the best. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to buy your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.